If I want to go on holiday, I have to get on a plane and show my passport, then pay for accommodation, food and everything else. Then it's back home after a week and back to reality. This lot just gets on a boat, comes across the channel, dumps their passports in the sea and arrives in Costa del Britain where everything is free. And unlike me, it's not back to reality after a week. Oh no, their holiday never ends. My back to reality involves working to pay for their lifelong stay. No wonder you see scenes like this. They can't wait to get here. They even get free transfers to all-inclusive Hotel Britain. And some are far from being grateful. Quite the opposite. They are laughing in our faces. Well, that's certainly the case with the Somalians I had an encounter with in my local park. And that's nothing compared to this guy's encounter with a Somali gang. I'd been out. Um, I'd been out for something to eat with a friend in Withington, just up the road. Uh, I was walking home. Uh, it was dark, it was rainy, but I thought it'd be nice to walk home in the rain. I was walking past this park, which is Platt Fields in Manchester on Wilmslow Road. All of a sudden, six masked assailants jumped out onto me and smashed me to the ground. They got hold of my hair and they smashed my head onto the pavement and there was blood everywhere I couldn't see. Then they picked me up and carried me bodily into the park and they started kicking and punching me. Uh, they were saying things like, get off our fucking territory, white man, that kind of thing. It was territorial, it was about hatred. Um, they carried on kicking and punching me. Um, they made me put my hands up and then one of them stabbed me. Uh, and it was quite odd to see because it was almost like he was at Heidelberg. He kind of launched into me. Um, it was a short bladed knife, one in the back and one in the buttock. Um, it was a Stanley knife or a craft knife, something like that. Um, it was a gang of Somali young men. Um, now, they weren't out to kill me, they were just out to rob me, okay? But they humiliated me and, and beat me up and all the rest of it. The worst thing, actually, was the reaction to this from some, well, white liberal colleagues. Um, not all, some colleagues, I was working at the university at the time as a tutor, a part-time tutor. Um, <clears throat> Some were perfectly okay and had an absolutely appropriate response. But some of them said things like, well, I used to live there and nothing like that happened to me. As though I was lying about it, my God. Um, and another one said, well, the silly bastards. <laughs> you know, as though they kicked a, a football through the kitchen window and sullied their reputation somewhat. So it wasn't about the crime, it certainly wasn't about the victim, it was about the perpetrators and the context. It was about, well, what can we do to frame this, to, to kind of think about how we can help those perpetrators or how we can present them in, in, in a positive way. Maybe it wasn't a knife. Maybe it was one of those surgeons using a scalpel to operate on him for his own good. Interesting, our Somali gun is telling an Englishman walking on English public land to get off their land. Even more interesting is how the left-wing activists rush to the defence of his attackers. Only in backward Britain, folks. The replacement theory is not sounding so much like a conspiracy theory anymore, is it? Maybe there is a tiny bit of truth in it after all. Anyway, back to my story. I was walking through my local park, as I often do. It was great weather and the sun was shining. It had a nice vibe and there was people playing tennis, jogging, cycling, having picnics, etc. It's near the university, so uh, there is lots of students, including international students. Then I saw three Somali men in their 20s walking towards me like gangsters, taking up the full path and chomping on gum. I noticed them looking at me as they drew level and then one abruptly stepped right in front of me and made a farting noise with his mouth. Then he said, what you fucking for? I looked at him and replied, I'm obviously not fighting, am I, dickhead? Then they all burst out laughing and carried on swaggering down the path, looking back at me. I carried on walking in the opposite direction, looking back at them, but not smiling. Now, interesting behaviour, isn't it, for people who have supposedly just fled war and death? 
I'd like to think if I'd just been taken in like that, I'd have a bit of gratitude and respect for the local people. Also interesting is they all had designer clothes on, head to toe kitted out in expensive clothes and trainers. They also had what looked like new iPhones in their hand and jewellery around their necks. How did they pay for that? They clearly don't work, loitering around the area all day. And where do they live? They're certainly not homeless, unlike the poor locals I see sitting on the street begging for change. Pretty sure they don't have mortgages or pay rent. How can they if they don't have a job? So unless they came here as millionaires, they are getting it all for free. Yet it's impossible for people here to get social housing, unless, of course, you just came in on a boat. I've heard the argument we need to build more. The fact is, it's not our responsibility to pave over our countryside with concrete jungles to house these men. It's deranged to say it is. The fact is, these people are laughing at us. All these men coming here, and yet I have never seen one homeless on the streets. Not one. Why is that? Not that I'd want to see them living on the streets. What kind of country says, come here illegally, we'll pay for you when you get here, and it's fine to bring all your backward practices with you. Don't mind us, you're free to get up to all the criminal activity you want. You can even go around stabbing and harassing our citizens, but don't worry, we'll defend you. How long before British citizens start getting evicted from their houses so they can be given to these asylum-seeking men? With every day that passes, it sounds less and less far-fetched. Is it any wonder that people are now taken to the streets? Maybe it's time for the government to wake up and start listening to the concerns of its people.